Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. Welcome to football. We need to help players take charge of their mindset, give them simple tools and techniques, demystify sports psychology for players, giving them the best opportunity to learn and develop their mindset. And so I wrote that sort of tough and I was very fortunate in as much as people seem to like it. Um, very proud that Gareth Bale last year said it was a book that changed his life. I don't know if it did. He said it, you know, so who am I? <laughs> no, to, we take uh, it. Yeah, reject of that. I'll take that one. Um, and it's, it, it's best selling in, in the States in, in its category and its niche. It doesn't sell like Harry Potter. I'm not saying that. Right. But it sold well. And, and so people seem to have enjoyed that. So I've got my books. I've got a golf book as well. Golf tough. And then I wanted to further demystify things. Uh, and so I wanted to, I, what I've done is uh, I have an online academy, which is a series of animated videos for players, coaches and parents. It's very much about integrating psychology into the process of improvement and playing uh, so that players, coaches and parents can speak a, a common language around mindset. And I'm sure we'll come on to some of these tools and techniques today tools and techniques I call game face and match script and squashing ants and using controllers and stuff so so so, so there's that and we supported 23 college programs last fall um, a bunch of clubs in America and uh, a bunch of high schools as well but I've, I've worked with players who played for Liverpool Manchester City Manchester United Spurs Arsenal uh, abroad in Germany France Spain in America, a lot members of the U.S. women's national team, the U.S. men's national team. So uh, I've been blessed to have that opportunity. And I've worked with a number of clubs in the Premier League as well. Again, some some uh, on confidentiality agreements. But the last one, I was in the medical department at, at FC Bournemouth for a few years before lockdown. Uh, so I was blessed with the opportunity to work alongside Eddie Howe and I've worked with Steve McLaren and various other top coaches. So and then outside of 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 soccer, I was lead psychologist for England golf for a few years, uh, lead psychologist for England rugby alongside uh, Eddie Jones going into the last World Cup uh, and really worked with Olympians and various other sports and then work in the corporate sector as well. So um, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. I, 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 I shamelessly get around a little bit. Yes, in, in a sport like golf, there's so much time to think. But in, in soccer, um, whilst soccer works in seconds, the brain and the nervous system, the brain works in milliseconds. The brain trumps soccer for speed every single time. And so as you play, as you compete, and you guys know this far better than I do, the, the brain is working in milliseconds. It's constantly judging what's going on around you at all times. And so players are throwing up thoughts and feelings, emotions even, every single second, especially at the level of feeling. You're, you're mm. feeling things as things unfold. And so those thoughts, feelings, emotions can impact. They can impact your anticipation, your awareness, your decision-making, your physical functioning. Very important things in the game for you to be able to execute your actions and your responsibilities optimally and so the brain is working milliseconds and so players I think need simple tools and techniques to be able to manage their feelings emotions and thoughts in order to for them to optimize their anticipation their awareness their decision making their physical functioning right the other side of it is as you mentioned before there Sean is that look as a golfer I could yes I have to qualify for tours I have to qualify to play at a certain level but there is always something for me to play I pay my entrance fee I go play right even if that's on the mini tours in football it's like if the manager or head coach decides well I you know I'm playing this way this week and you don't really fit this game model so I'm not playing you or I you know I don't fancy you as about all kinds of things I've heard over the years from you know, very prominent coaches as to why they're not picking players. You think, hey, I'm working so hard as a player, but I'm not being picked. I mean, I've worked, get this, I worked with a League One player in, in England a few years ago. This League One player, very good player. Um, and it, this is what 
Brighton were in the Championship, not in the Premier League at the time. And this League One player was playing really well. He became player of the season for that club. He was touted to go to Brighton. A new manager came into the club he was playing at in, in, in League One. This manager wanted to miss out the middle of the park. So quite long ball, quite direct play. He was a midfielder, okay, quite skillful. Suddenly he found himself on the bench. Suddenly he found himself uh, out of favour. He was player of the season, yet not playing. And it's those kind of things that are head messy. I'll put that politely, head messy, um, that players, soccer players, footballers have to deal with. And so it's tough. It's challenging. And there's no simple solution there that I can give anybody. But you've mentioned techniques. And whether it's you're not playing and you're just training and you're waiting or striving to get back in the team, or you are actually playing. One of my most important techniques um, is what I call a game face. Now, underpin, underpinning game face is actually a psychological um, technique called individual zone of optimal functioning. Individual zone of optimal functioning, hence why I called it a game face, because it's a little bit of a mouthful, right? But what a game face is, individual zone, zone of optimal functioning, game face, is your optimal mental state, your best mental state. It's the personality you want to have out there on the field, the pitch. It's the attitude you want to portray. It's a physical optimizer. It's a behavioral blueprint. It's an emotional manager. So it does a lot, a game face. I'll give you an example of a game face. And this is a player, a very famous player. And if, if you think of the world's top 20 players, this player would probably come in the world's top 20. He, he played in the Champions League a few seasons ago. Uh, just the Champions League final. And in that, going into that final, rather than thinking, um, got to win, got to win, got to win, got to perform, got to perform, got to perform, want to do everything great, want to be man of the match, don't want to let my teammates down, don't want to let myself down. Rather than having these kind of thoughts, this kind of narrative, he was thinking, my job on the pitch is to be relentless and dominant. I'm going to be relentless and dominant nonstop. Nothing and no one takes me away from relentless and dominant. I'm going to get up and down the pitch, relentless and dominant. If my cross goes into row Z, relentless and dominant. If I miss a chance to score, relentless and dominant. If we go a goal down, relentless and dominant. If we go a goal up, relentless and dominant. I'm going to be relentless and dominant nonstop. And nothing and no one takes me away from relentless and dominant. Nothing and no one. Every action, every responsibility executed in the style of relentless and dominant. Relentless and dominant is this player's game face. I'm going to stick to my game face no matter what. I'm going to say it, be it, do it, act it. If there's a camera on me, I'm going to show that camera relentless and dominant with every action, every movement, every run, every responsibility. So that game face your optimal mental state, your behavioral blueprint, your attitude, your personality, you create that through principally through your memory. When I sit down with a player and I want to help them create a game phase, we start to talk about their best games. Success leaves clues, right? I always say to players, one of the most important things you can be thinking about every single day is your best games, you at your best, because it's so easy as a player to resonate your worst or think about and reflect upon the poor things, the things aren't, that aren't working rather than your best games, your strengths, the areas that are going well. So I get them to open up a catalog of pictures, inner pictures around them at their best. And they might think about, you might do this now and people listening in might do this. They might think about them at their best, their very best game. And then I get them to strip things back to a couple of action-based words. Now, the key here is they must be action-based, okay? So you must be able to be them and do them and act them intentionally, on purpose, deliberately. So when you take to the pitch, the field, you can actually act it, be it, do it, show the camera those action-based words. When you're warming up, you're playing a small-sided game, you're going to play that small-sided game in the style of those words. So you, words. Those words might be, 
alert, alive, lively, sharp, athletic, dominant, upbeat, powerful, cool, calm, relaxed. Every player is going to be a little bit different. I get players who prefer that kind of cool and calm and relaxed. And I get players who prefer that sharp, upbeat, positive, alert, alive, lively. Every player is a little bit different. But they've got to reflect you at your best. Or perhaps you in your dream game. That's actually, actually exercising your imagination rather than your memory. Your memory is your best game. Your imagination is your dream game. And so you've got a couple of action-based words, and that starts a game face. And what I would say to everybody listening in is that that game face, you could actually expand upon that game face. You can have a model player. You can have a concept like an animal or something like that. So a very famous English striker that I work with has a game face of confident, relentless lion. A very famous winger I work with in the English Premier League has a game face of brave, lively, relentless Ronaldo. Brave, lively, relentless Ronaldo. So even though this player is a professional at the very highest level, he would still say, I'm modelling myself on Ronaldo. When I go out on the pitch, I want to be brave, lively, relentless Ronaldo. Action-based words, a model player or an animal. And if you want to learn more about that, then I would put people over to my books, especially Soccer Tough and Soccer Tough 2, where I talk more about that. And in my academy, there's actual simple brought to life videos on that game face. So that's a really important thing. So it's great to hear. I know there's a lot of pros around the, uh, and, and young players, I mean, the great thing about this is a 10 year old, an eight year old can have a game face. Mm. I've heard from coaches an eight year old saying, yeah, coaches who have eight year olds who are positive messy. And because, you know, young people have heroes and they can imagine, they can imagine themselves into an action-based word and a model player. And that's the beauty of this. But equally, somebody worth a hundred million pounds in transfer fees can still have a game face and a Gareth Bell can still have a game face. That is the beauty because that's how our brains work. Hmm. Clearly, it starts with creating a game face for yourself. And then it's about putting that game face on a pedestal. It's about getting clear in your mind that when I go train, when I go practice, I'm going to train in the style of my game face. I'm going to practice in the style of my game face by actually putting the game face front and center in training and practice. You give yourself a better chance to wire your brain like that, to marinate your body in this notion of game face. Doing it every day, picturing it every day, thinking about it every day. These things are important, again, to be able to wire your brain in that way. And then, as I really kind of alluded to with this Champions League player, one of the best players in the world that I'm blessed to work with, going into his Champions League final, but going into every game that he plays, he puts that game face first. And he matches that game face he integrates that game face into what he knows he's got to do on the, the pitch. And I'm always talking to clients about, look, you've got actions and responsibilities. And in many respects, that's just what performance is. It's a bunch of actions and it's a bunch of responsibilities that you've got to execute you know, within your individual tactics, within the game model. It's as simple as that, action, actions and responsibilities. So when you create a narrative, an inner story around my job on the pitch is to execute my actions and responsibilities in the style of my game face. My job on the pitch is to execute my actions and responsibilities in the style of my game face, such as relentless and dominant, confident, relentless lion, upbeat, positive, messy, whatever it is, whatever it is. Then that narrative wires your brain creates a blueprint on your brain to give you a better chance to go and execute in the style of your game face. And then if you drop down to what I would call your low performance mindset at any stage, you become inhibited, you become distracted, you get engulfed in unhelpful emotions, unhelpful negative thoughts, ANTS, if you like. ANTS is an acronym for automatic negative thoughts, A-N-T-S, automatic negative thoughts. You can squash those ants by getting back to those game face, or sorry, getting back to the game face. 
Now, this one little teaser. So all of that is applicable. In many respects, all of what I've said is a kind of, it, it's a, is it a technique? It is, and it's, and it's also an underpinning philosophy. It's something that I'm immersing my clients in every single day. Every single day, my clients get a little WhatsApp message from me around what we've just discussed that there. Because I know brains in sport are wired towards got to win, got to win, got to win, got to play well, got to play well, got to play well. And as you correctly mentioned there, Dylan, I'm, I'm trying to shift players' attention away from those things that we can't control so well and more onto not the performance outcomes, but the performance process and mindset. Yes, things that we can control much more, but tasks, tasks we can focus on. Now, the last thing to say here is this little teaser in terms of a technique, which is I...